is between what? One and three. And then we have x square, where x is greater than what? Uh, let's put it, this is how we wrote it. x is greater than three. Okay, so using, still using the numerical approach, the point x starts from one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we have f of x. Good. Now, when x is equal to 1, the function is 2x, uh, piecewise, is on this function. So it's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. When s is equal to 2, it will be 2 times 2, which is 4. When s equals to 3, you have 2 times 3, which is what? 6. Okay? Now, let's pause here and then go and draw the first bit of the graph. So we have the point x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so forth. Okay, good. And then the point here, let's take, um, let's take Still, I'm going to take uh, five. Okay, let me delete this. So I have five here. I have 10 here. Let me take 15. Okay. So we have Y, we have X. Okay. Very well, so when x is equal to one, y is two, okay? So we plot that, that is x one and y two. When x equals to two, y is four, so we plot that here. x is equal to three, y is what, six. We plot that here, okay? So from the plots we have, we can clearly see that this is what, a straight line, okay? This is a straight line graph because the function is 2x, huh? and we know that a straight line is given as the function y is equals to mx plus what? Plus c, which is the intercept, okay? So, so our gradient here is two, intercept is zero. So this is the equation of the straight line. Now, another thing you have to know when plotting this graph, please, Watch it carefully because I ask you in exams. Uh, here we are saying that one is part of the interval, the domain of x. Uh, and any time a number is part of the domain, you shade it. So we're going to shade the edge with a close interval. And then when we come to three here, two, we're going to shade the edge with a close interval. Take note of it. Okay? Take note of it. These details are not in your notes. That's why I said take note of it. Then um, for the next set, where x is greater than three, eh, we've taken the point four, five. When x is four, it's going to be four squared. Eh? The function is four squared. So it's going to be what, 16. And then for five, is going to be five squared, which is what, 25, okay? So we'll have to extend our y-axis to what, 20 and to what, 25. Okay. Yeah, let, let me find out, any questions so far? Any questions so far? Class, any question? Caleb. Caleb, do you have a question?
Hello? Can you hear me? Benjamin? Benjamin, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yeah, any question? Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, okay, let's continue. Okay. So x square, like we have, we have 416. So we got 416 here. Okay, 16 here. Okay, the point is up here. 16 should be up here. Okay. Then we have. Um, 425, 525, we have 525 up here, okay? You see, but this is a continuous uh, interval, okay? And it starts from three, but three is not inclusive. So you still have to go and evaluate the value of this function at three, okay? So at the point three, we have three square, which is what? Which is nine. Okay, so three square is nine. This will be nine here. So we have the point nine here, okay? But this point three nine, is not going to be shaded. We have to open it because it's not part. Three, the, the point three is not part, okay, of the point of the domain of what? S square. Uh, the other piecewise half which is x squared. So then we can plot our curve, which goes like that. It's exponential. Okay, or let me say a parabola, okay? It's a parabola looking like this. Uh, very good. So this is the graph of the piecewise function, f of s defined as 2x over the interval 1 to 3, and then x squared over the interval x greater than three. Any question? Any question? Okay. Any question class before I move on? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay, thanks for the response. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so that is for visualization. Then um, there are also empirical uh, functions, functions that can be fitted to empirical data Okay, like um, if you've read this article online, I ask you to follow me online for some of the publications. Okay, you can see some application of it. Uh, here I was using this to, to model the recovery okay, time and infection time for, for malaria in Ghana, and um, as well as modeling the lifespan of human beings okay in in ghana okay based on epid epidemiological data okay it's a very interesting paper you can find it in the international journal of business and innovation okay or when you go to research gate you find that article there very very nice uh, data which applies empirical functions okay when you go to your note you have this graph i think we've looked at this graph already Good. Now, there are three main types of, uh, let me say, mappings, okay? Uh, because it is only one of these three that is a 
a valid function. Mm -hmm. So uh, th the three types of mappings or the three types of functions are injective function, subjective function, and bijective function. Okay, good. Now, when we talk about injective function, injective function simply is one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, one-to-one. -one. Uh, so like you can see a demonstration here, there is one-to-one -one relation. Uh, so one to B, two to C, and three to A. One-to-one -one mapping, okay? We call it an injective mapping or injective function. Good. Whereas when we come to subjective, subjective means onto mapping, okay? Onto mapping means that all the elements in the code domain should be mapped onto, okay? So everybody in this um, half should be mapped onto. Uh, so we are not concerned whether the relation is, I mean, many to one, uh, I mean, one to many or whatever, okay? What we are saying here is everybody here should be mapped onto. That makes it a, a suggestive mapping, okay? Now, anytime we have these two mappings, in uh, a function that is both injective and subjective, we call such a function a bijective function, okay? Cool. Because if it's one-to-one -one and then it is also onto, then such a function is a bijective function. Very well. Good. Then we also talk about the inverse of a function, like the inverse of a relation, the inverse of a valid function, which is a bijective function. Okay, good. So let's, let's try this. We have one, two, uh, let's say we have three, four here. So if a function maps from one to two, one to three, and then two to four, that is the function f, then the inverse of the function, okay, will change the whole procedure. We'll rather map from three to one, and then four to, four to two, okay? That is what the inverse of the function does. Very well. Now, the question is how do we obtain the inverse of the function? There are three basic rules, or better still, three basic steps if you want to identify the inverse of the function. Step one is you let f of x be equal to y. Okay, you let f of x be equal to y. Okay, then the next point is you're going to interchange X and Y. Uh, so we're going to interchange X and Y in the resulting equation. And then finally, we make Y the subject, make Y the subject, Y the subject, okay the subject of the equation. And uh, of course, that step, I'll just speak to that when we get there. Good, so let's take this for example. So if you want the inverse of the function f of s is four x plus two, okay, then like you said, f of s should be equal to y. So step one, we're going to let y be equal to what? 4x, 4x plus what? Plus two, okay? Then step two, we are to interchange x and y. So we make this x is equal to what? Is equal to 4y plus what? Plus two, okay? Then finally, we make y the subject. So you take two to the other side. Or you may write it as what? 4y is equal to what? 
is equals to two, sorry, X. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me write it well. So I'm writing this four Y, okay, on the right side. So four Y is equals to X minus what? Minus, minus two, okay? So I'm taking this to this side. That is why it's looking like that. Very well. Then we divide both sides by by four. So we have y is equals to what? X minus two. Okay. All over what? All over four. Okay. So that will give you your your y. And then you let this y be f inverse of y. Okay, so this is the inverse function, and it's a function of y, not of x, okay? Because the, the range of f becomes the domain of f inverse. Uh, I know I've mentioned that earlier. So this becomes y minus two over what? Over four. Okay, so let's do a, a, a quick exercise to to verify the solution we've just done. You don't need to do that in exams, but I'm just asking just for uh, assurance and confidence, okay, in our solution. So we have, let's say X was one, okay? Then it means that if we put X into this function, then we're going to get four times one, which is four plus two, which is six. Okay, so it means that f of x maps one to what? To six. So f, the function f maps one to six. What about the function? Um, let me indicate this. So this is the domain. This is your range. Okay, so f has mapped from one to six. What about f inverse? Like I said, f inverse comes to pick the element y, okay, and maps it to x. So it's going to pick on six. So this is going to be six minus what? Six minus two over four. And clearly we can see we have what? Four over four, which equals to what? Which is equal to one, okay? So four over four is equal to one. Okay, so this tells us that Indeed, the inverse of the function will reverse what the function f had done, okay? It just reverses the whole process, okay? Very good. Yeah, it reverses the whole process. Very good. So in very basic term, when we talk about an inverse in practical term, a function in practical term, a function is just a process. Okay, so one basic process which we are, which has brought us all online is the spread of coronavirus, okay? So it's spreading at a, an exponential rate. Mm? So the function, if you want to model the spread of this epidemiology or this pandemic, okay, it's based on an exponential function. Huh? And then if we should want to reverse the process, uh, in the presence of a steroid or in the presence of a cure, okay, we're going to have the, the curing will be the inverse function. Uh, so if you want to model it, it's going to be the inverse function of what? The exponential function for the rate of infection. Okay, yeah. So there are more questions here. I'm going to give some to you as a, as a sidebar. So like uh, question B here, C, we can have F and G, okay? So this four will be an assignment. And um, what I'm going to do with assignment is, I'm going to put all these assignments you're doing together. I'll put it together as an MCA, okay, for you. Uh, so if you've submitted your solution, that's okay. Uh, you just put everything together and put it back as an MCA for me. 
okay but the forums are different as for the forums you have to contribute uh, because the network will not allow everybody in this class today i checked the class is about 20 plus uh, uh -huh. so if we have 20 plus students and uh, um, we have just about four or five participants in class then obviously there are challenges okay but the forums will help us to know if you are really following what is being taught or what you're studying uh, at home, okay? So make sure you pass it. And um, please, I will not take any excuses for not submitting your forums as well. So if the deadline has passed, you will score zero for the forum. Uh -huh. And uh, no excuses will be tolerated. Uh, so take note of that. The second forum has been posted, but I haven't, the date are signed Okay, has not elapsed, but you should be checking because it's already been posted. Hmm? Once the time is due, you see the second forum also popping up. You see it on your page. Okay, let's move on to the next um, concept. Then uh, finally we have uh, what we refer to as a composition of functions, just like the composition of uh, of relations, okay? Good, so the composition of functions, merging two functions together, okay? And they are usually denoted uh, just like the composition of relations, f of g. So if you have function f and another function of g, okay, then the composition of the two functions, f and g, is written as this, or you can write it as what? This f of g, okay, f of g is the same as f of g of x, or you can say f of what? f as a function of what? of the result of g operating on x okay very good so this our notations for that now let's take an example on the composition of relations good so if we're given two functions uh, f of n as 2n plus 1 and then f of g as 3n plus minus 1. And I ask you to find f of, of g and also g of what? g of what? f. Okay. Then what you do is for the first solution, we're going to have f of g. f of g is what? It's g f of what g of x g of n okay which is going to be f the function f g of n is defined as what is defined as 3 3 n minus 1 okay so it means that wherever you see n you see, the function is f of n. Uh, so if you are seeing 3n minus 1, okay, in place of that n, then it means that your n in, in the f is now 3n minus 1. So anywhere you see n in this function, you're going to replace it with 3n minus 1, okay? So if we're expanding, that will be what? 2 times, now your n is what? 3n minus 1, okay, plus, plus 1, okay? Then you expand and simplify. This will give us what? Well, system minus 2 plus 1, okay? Good. That will give us what? 6n, 6n minus one as a final answer. Okay, now let's check for 
g of f g of f will give us g of f of n that will be equal to what g of f of n is what 2n plus 1 okay meaning that wherever you see n in the function g of n you replace with everything with the bracket here so this gives us 3 into bracket what 2n plus 1 okay oh minus let me write that well plus 1 all minus 1 that should be 6 n plus what plus 3 minus 1 which is equals to what 6 6 n uh, plus what plus 2 okay good so clearly that should, should tell us that f of g is not the same as what g of n okay they are not commutative mm -hmm. very well so that brings us to the close of uh, uh, today's uh, content okay there is another example here we have log x to the base 3 and then g of x is s raised to the power 4 so if you ask to find f of g f of g you find you follow the same procedure that is f composite g is what is f of what into bracket g okay so g of x okay then that will give us f g of x is defined as what x square s raised to the power of four okay good and then x f itself is defined is defined as log x so wherever you see x in this function because it is f of x uh we replace it with the content here so we have log of what x raised to the power of four to the base what to the base three okay that will give us f of g and if you do same for g of x you should get log x to the base three or raised to the power four very well so on that note uh, i bring my presentation to an end we are done with chapter three and chapter four okay for for this course let me take some questions from you who is there hello sir yes. yes thank you the caleb is linda i was logging in my uh my email and it went to my son's email okay, okay. so thank you yes yes